Hi, I'm Jerry Hyde, Youth Services Manager at the Ames Public Library. Welcome to Well Read, a program about a little bit of this and a little bit of that at your Ames Public Library. This morning we are continuing, continuing our series of the early literacy skills and practices that every child needs to have to learn how to read or to be prepared to read when they reach school. Um, you did as a child as well, um, but now we have terms for them and these are the early literacy skills. But today we're talking about the practices. There's five early practices and one of those is music. And so thus we have wonderful books and wonderful musical instruments and ways that we're going to show you and share with you this morning today on how to use those materials and make that happen um, in your home as well. And I brought my musical expert here from our youth <laughs> services department, Chris, um, here to help us share um, how we can sing and why is singing important to our um, children who are learning how to read. Hi, Jerry. Hi. Um, singing is a great thing for kids. It does all kinds of things when it comes to reading. One of the things is it breaks words into specific sounds. It breaks them apart, and especially when there's words that you're singing that cover two notes, the kids hear that separation, so that's a really great thing. It also does things like memory retention. If you think of the alphabet song, I myself sometimes even sing it <laughs> but yep. when you're trying to go through the shelves and so on. And we often hear kids when they're trying to learn their ABCs. Mm -hmm. That's way, a great way for it to do that. Um, Music is a great bonding thing. I remember when I was a kid, my mom and I would sing show tunes doing dishes, but it was a wonderful thing. I'll never forget that, that we would, she'd always sing out of tune on purpose. Ah. <laughs> but, but at least we would hear the words, you hear all those different things that help get you together and uh, great, build great memories and things. Well, let's kind of build on that one about singing out of tune on purpose. I don't have to do it on purpose, it just happens. Um, and I always feel that, you know, we have right here with you and I, we kind of have the two ends of the spectrum. And <laughs> we I'm, have a wonderful singer thank you, and someone nice. that can see the rhythm and hear and mm -hmm. break that down in an easier way than myself, who's mm -hmm. over here at the end of the spectrum. But as Doesn't we know matter. that toddler time, I love to sing along with the CDs yeah. and sing along with the, the music and um, it makes me feel good. I believe that, it, you know, watching the kids, it makes them feel good. But with, especially with parents that don't know how to sing or are uncomfortable singing, what's your recommendation on what they should do? You know, I don't think it matters if you can sing on pitch. One of the things I think you should do is just make up stuff and it doesn't matter what the tune. Um, last night I was thinking about stuff you might sing. Okay, it's time for bed, a great transition. Now it's time to brush your teeth, brush your teeth, brush your teeth. Anybody could do that. You don't have to have a specific tune. I think one of the big challenges our kids and our parents have when we come to story times is we may not know the words. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a great time to check out books that actually have words in them and check out CDs. A lot of them have the words printed. But if they don't make them up, it doesn't really matter. It's just the idea that the kids are hearing sounds broken into parts, up and downs, around and so on. And, so. and, and you talked about the memorization yes. and that, you know, I remember from my childhood, um, the the Congress, how a bill goes to Congress and, you know, the reading rock and... Wow, I don't know that one. Even, oh, well, I'll have to show you that. I can't sing it for you, but I can tell you how the bill yeah. goes to Congress. Yeah. <laughs> because I, you know, I could learn and I associated that right. with, with that. Um, and talking about the materials, we you talked about sure. CDs, everything that we use in the library, right. we, we own. We so own. So they these. can check them out um, if they're curious about that. Um, so you have... I have, yeah, and to go along with that then, we also have music instruments and things that will help you break those sounds into uh, separate parts. So I brought you rhythm sticks. Oh, thank you. And um, we have those here. You could make those easy at home with just a dowel stick. Right. And most stores, most um, that stores show will craft carry items or um, your... Your local your, hardware stores, your yep. uh, do-it-yourself stores. And you just saw them. Yep. Um, this one's, I think, like, what, five-eighths or seven-eighths, but yeah, you can a get thicker. a smaller one. And Any they make side. different t tones. Yeah, now and the show bigger how ones, they tap to the end. We do 
eye-hand coordination, yeah. all those things that come into play and with that. So when you have bifocals, it kind of gets harder, <laughs> but but it's fun. We struggle with the kid. They right. see how we we do things too. But I find that there's different pitches with the different sizes. There are Is different that? pitches, and I think that's good too. And even when you are doing them high and low, they might sound different because you're tapping them differently. Right. So that's a great way to and separate words and to do other things. Yeah, and slide them. You can slide them. That doesn't have much, but we have some. Oh, oh there's one where it's got the, yep, has so a that nice makes a sound. So anything that can make sound can help break up those words and um, music and so on. So And this also helps because we cross that midline. So we also, in, in um, by doing those activities, both sides of our brain are working That's because right. we're crossing and going up and down and, and, and all down. around. So um, music does more things than just the sound of That's right. the it beautifulness of, of the singer. Yeah. Um, things I'd love to have parents do at home is let those kids make noise. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the child. I know it can drive you batty for a while, but let them get out the pots and the pans and the wooden spoons and pound around and make noises. I had a son who could not stop tapping. He turned out to be a percussionist. He would sit with his feet and his hands going dit, 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 all day long. Finally, you'd give him something like a drum, and wow, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> so. And from what I heard, he's a great. He was in he's, a band. He was. And, and he was played great, the quads at the high yeah, school, and it yeah. was really fun to watch. So, simple things like um, oatmeal oatmeal containers. containers, things that you get done with. Something else that we have here. Can I show? Yep. Things. We have all kinds of cool musical instruments that you get to hit, get here from the library. What's nice is that you can get packets that have and they come in these plastic things. I don't need to hold that up, but um, you can get them in sets of different types of items, or if you've got a group play, or if you've having the kids over for an afternoon, come and check out a whole bag of rhythm sticks or eggs or something like that. This is an egg, it's yep. just an egg shaker. Yep. So yep. we have those, but if you don't have that, this is just old beans in a, in a plastic container, so. And again, the exploration of the beans or the rice or flour. <laughs> and the different amounts and in each one can make a huge difference, so. So you just, can do some of that, you know, um, we're hearing a lot about STEAM or the science technology, yeah. experimenting and making those predictions right. is a wonderful way, again, with music, that you wouldn't necessarily think that music you know, sometimes we just think we listen to music and that's it. That's but right. it has a lot of um, benefits from it as well. You have a, another homemade item oh, that I, I, I'm curious about. and I, my homemade tambourine. You know, you can buy tambourines. You've got one to shake. And then you've got homemade. It's just bells in a plastic plate and it's just sewn around the edges. And you can do this with paper plates. And, and again, anything loose that will rattle doesn't really matter. So, And, and I see that... Um, they're not glued on. No, she's, they're not. She's taken it with a, a, thread, a piece of plastic right. um, thread that has gone through um, the plastic plate. And then you can be creative and they can make their they own They can make their uh, own musical and so it's their music to play with. Right. Which is very empowering as well. That is. Um, some of the other things we want to talk about, some of the books. We've got some great books. I love this one. Pull this the sing? Out. Yes, this I love that As soon one as I saw it, I knew what it was, and I didn't even have to open it up because I used to sing this song all the time. We sang it way back when, in, when I was in chorus. Um, but what's nice is the library has a lot of these that come with the CD. So if you don't know the words, the words are in there, and then you can listen to it. And it's a great thing for the kids to do when you're trying to settle them down, you need them to have an activity. Give them a book with a song and let them sing away or just play CDs. The, dance and then dance. It, oh, Go and ahead. dance with it. Well, and yeah. I was going to make the comment about the CD on it because the CD that's in our musical sets like that um, help you help your child read the story as well. Right. And turn the pages. Most of them have a a, a tone that when you turn the Tells page and turn. then you make it happen. And yeah. um, so there's several ways that you can use those kits. Just listening to the right. CD and practicing turning pages and then practicing and, and, singing and, definitely and reading. definitely hearing, hearing the tones and yeah. so on. So um, dancing is wonderful. Get up and dance. I, th I, love, I think everybody should dance. It doesn't matter how, you could be a Julia Louis-Dreyfus on Seinfeld. Yeah. She yeah. just and that's, all her core. <laughs> it doesn't <here> matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Let the kids dance, stomp around, march to the beat. 
when you've got music, the ants go marching, and not only do you hear the beat, but the ants go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. 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 And so you, you get get the math, and you you get the math, and that's another thing music is great for. They say that anybody that is really um, into the music type stuff typically has great uh, math skills. They have great retention skills, all stuff like that. So yeah, and wonderful. some of that comes naturally to people, and some of it. I, I can remember that I was sharing the song that we stand up and sit down, and mm -hmm. um, the one parent came over to me and she says, "Well, that's a beat of six. And I go, "What? What are you talking about?" And um, then she says, "Well, you count to six, and then you stand up." And I'm yeah. going. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I was just like a listening bit to of the music, music background. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so. Well, and the younger you start, the and better so you really, are. really young, yeah. um, the better you are. The kids with the very early um, introduction to music and so on usually do better at that, and so that will help them reading and everything. And that's so. why it happens to be one of the early the literacy early skills, literacy um, phonological awareness down mm -hmm. here at the um, bottom book. Um, happens to be a very learned skill that reading that rhyming and all that is a learned skill so it doesn't just always come naturally I know I no, mean it doesn't it, it, it's it a learned is skill a learned skill so and I always blame my that. mom that I am so bad because she um, Elvis Presley was the song that she sang. <laughs> so it's yeah. all Elvis Presley's fault. See, and my right. mother was in the Sweet Adeline, so I sang a lot of those songs with her. I remember some of the very old fashioned yeah, songs it. with her that were, it was a great thing to learn though. So, um, and it sticks with you for life. It does. And, so. and it's one of those things that, you know, just because books have words in them doesn't mean that they're not. They don't yes, have a rhythm, absolutely. and they don't. Um, the Can I love you, you a bushel and a peck. Where is, is that? That's the third one over one there. Over um, and the you know I know that at Valentine's Day I like to use that in toddler time, and and it. I can't sing it necessarily, no. but you can make that rhythm go. Um, so, but if you can sing, I know that when you do story time with "I Love You" a bushel and peck, you, I, I you would, turn into I'd song. Sing so. it. I turn into song. But another great one, jazz baby. And jazz baby, right. yeah, I'm not sure where it's at. Um, it's That's around here eight, somewhere. Eight, but no jazz more. baby um, also is a, an excellent. Most of what we picked have something having to do with rhythm. So anything rhythm, another great thing. Just read nursery rhymes; they have great rhythm. Jazz, jazz baby's, baby's clear way over, there, over there. So, yeah. So nursery rhymes, mother goose rhymes, and even if you've never heard them before, they automatically come out in a beat because they've got such great rhyme to it. So yeah. anytime you do rhythm and rhyme with your kids, it's a great learning experience for everybody. And even our greatest writers, um, Dr. Seuss, uh, the Mulberry Street, um, I, here I saw it on Mulberry Street, mm -hmm. his first book was because he was on a boat going over to England and the rhythm of the boat oh, really? made him write the story. And or you know that inspired yeah. him to do the story and and that's what and all of his obviously have a rhythm yeah, with the rhyme and you know yes. so um, good good beginner readers have a lot of rhyme and rhythm to them so okay. and listening to music you know now we're not teaching anybody no. this we're just enjoying it and exploring it and having fun with it so and it just naturally comes with um, the territory right. then as a result. And, and then I have to mention your Tony Chestnut. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Jerry sings Tony Chestnut with her toddler time every single day. And it's wonderful because it's all about toe, knee, chest, nut. Funny name for a head. But <laughs> those kids learn the vocabulary with it too. And it, I can't tell you how many times we hear children singing that when they come in knowing they're coming to toddler time, when they go home. Some parents say, she sings it all the time at home. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. Yep, give her a new important. song later on if that one's getting right. tiresome. Give, but, yeah, give it. They, you know, variety is great. But just to learn the vocabulary, it helps learn their body parts. And that's the same way with the alphabet song. It's the same way with some of the other songs or books that we have where you read the book and they can hear the song in it. You know it's a song out there and hear all these new words that you might not normally hear in general conversation. And, and again, it's that slowing it down mm -hmm. and you can hear those um, sounds, individual sounds and right. syllables that that they can't hear otherwise or they don't aren't exposed to them That's otherwise right. unless you are from a musical family That's and you know people right. um, are playing piano at, 
at two. Yeah. And, but that's not most of us, no. um, you know, most of us. So it, it is important for you as a parent, um, you as a grandparent, you as a friend or a neighbor to sing to those children. Um, Teachers do that too. And teachers, and teachers do that teachers too. I have a too. son who had a teacher that they sang. Every time there was a transition, there was a pick up the toy song, there was a it's time to do this song and so on. And those kids knew those words yeah. and it got them moving. It, singing is a great transition from one activity to yes, another. Yes, it is. Car rides, sing yes. in the car. Boy, it makes the time go faster. Yes. <laughs> a lot faster. So, <laughs> yeah. So. so so singing is very, very important, um, no matter who you are, um, right. for the littlest one, um, all the way up to um, being older, because again, those, it, it works with both sides of your brain, so it helps develop and keep those um, synapses fresh and used. And so um, singing is the natural international language yeah, as it's well. It's just as important as talking, learning to talk and walk, actually. Right. They say that music is right up there with that. So right. it's in every language, every culture, um, everywhere you go, there's music of some sort. So. So come okay. to your library. We have lots of materials for you to take home with you, um, no matter what age you are. Um, come back into the children's area if you're a grandparent and having grandchildren come, or you want, or if you just want to play with a tambourine, <laughs> you can play with the tambourine as well. And we have some wonderful stories to tell or to share with you. So come on into the library. Um, come singing. Um, if you're not coming in singing, you'll go out singing and. Um, just enjoy the song and enjoy the words that you sing. And no matter whether or not you are confident in your singing, become confident and just sing because there's yeah. nothing like a song, um, just like our book called Sing. So please, um, until next time, sing along and we'll see you then. Thank you.